offered the lotus feet of Sri Guranga Mahaprabhu the following shloka of Srimad Bhagavatam. Vasudeva para Veda, Vasudeva para Makkha, Vasudeva para Yogi, Vasudeva para Kriya, Vasudeva para Madhyana, Vasudeva para Mtapa, Vasudeva para Parodharmo, Vasudeva para Gati. Saha Vasudeva. And that very wonderful name, which also Krishna uses in the Bhagavad Gita. Vasudeva Sahati Samahatma Sudulabaha. A very rare person, very, very special person. He can see Vasudeva everywhere. In the revealed scriptures, the ultimate object of knowledge is Sri Krishna, the personality of God. The purpose of performing <coughs> sacrifice is to please Sri Krishna. Yoga is for realizing Sri Krishna. All fruitive activities are ultimately rewarded by Sri Krishna alone. He is the supreme knowledge and all severe austerities are performed to know Sri Krishna. Religion Dharma is rendering loving service unto him. He is the supreme goal of life. Son of Vasudeva Sri Krishna. So this is a, a fantastic uh, confirmation of what is life all about. And when we say Sri Krishna, we can also say Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. Even with an enhanced feature. His enhanced feature is that he is coming together with Radharani in this form. But really Krishna, Chaitanya and also Lord Ram, they're all present in that divine personality as was confirmed to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya when he revealed the Sadbuj, a six-armed form, Ramakrishna and Mahaprabhu, all their symbols in the hands. So, Depending on the degree of meditation we are following at that moment, we can meditate about uh, Lord Chaitanya as a messenger of the Kali Yuga Mahamantra to save all people. We can meditate on him as the Avatari, the origin of the other Avatars. We can also meditate upon him intimately in the feature of Radha and Krishna coming one in form of Chaitanya. So there's different approaches to the personality of Lord Chaitanya. But the main, the main principal feature here, which we are uh, meditating, it is on his glorious descent. The infinite Lord descends upon earth. You see, this is something which we are very, very, very fortunate in the transcendental tradition of India. We can know the avatars. And the avatars means divine descent. So each one of the avatars fulfills an important mission. They don't come here to tourist. They come here to, to do something special, to deliver something. And Goranga Mahaprabhu, he comes to deliver the most important Yuga Dharma to all the people. And this unique manifestation of Lord Chaitanya, accompanied by Lord Nityananda, invited by Sri Advaita Acharya, celebrated by Sri Gadada and Sri Vas. This is uh, the Panchatattva. This is the uh, this is a deeper science which has been explained in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita and in the Chaitanya Bhagavat and in the Chaitanya Manga. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has five biographies. Uh, pretty amazing, no one person, five biographies by different authors. And uh, Vindavan Das Thakur, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, uh, Lochan Das Thakur, and then there is Narahari, I think Mukunda, no, Murari Gupta, Murari Gupta wrote down one, the fifth, who remembers the fifth? 
annotation of the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I just escaped my mind. So Mahaprabhu has really moved the minds, you know. He has moved the minds, he has moved the hearts, historically speaking, because all these, all these testimonies, all these things, they exist. And they coincide. In other words, they agree with each other. The volume of work, of literature, emanating from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is absolutely surprising. You can see how much divine teachings descended in and around Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even though he only left eight verses for us. Huh? This is completely, it blows your mind. There's so much work to be read about Lord Chaitanya's teachings that you can practically study the rest of your life. So many books are there. In that sense, I like to remember my god brother Kusha Krata, who dedicated a lot of his own energy translating all the Goswami Granta into English. Some amazing personalities, you know, very amazing personalities we have come across in this lifetime. Because really our gratefulness is that somebody points out what is an avatar, who is an avatar, and how to relate to an avatar. If you don't relate to an avatar, then it's like you don't relate to Bhagavad Gita. You don't relate to the Murti, Sri Murti. He is also is the Acha Vigraha. He is also like an expansion. You don't relate to Sri Dham because wherever the Lord appears, it becomes a sanctuary. So you don't relate, you don't even relate to Prashadam. Prashadam is Prashadam because it has been eaten by Sri Murti, <coughs> by the Lord. You invited the Lord, please take what I've prepared, prepared with love for you. That's, that's the whole idea, no? Please take it. Please accept it. So Sri Murti, this is such a, a, a wonderful feature of the Lord, like I'm taking this Sri Murti to Santa Dominican Republic because the devotees were crying for Sri Murti. We want to worship Lord Chaitanya, they told me. They insisted. So I said, okay, okay, okay. They insisted so much, I will bring it myself. <laughs> bring him myself. So I'm traveling. Actually, I travel many times in my life with deities. Just the other day, we were dra driving down the, the road to Yoga Peet. And Gorni and I were standing in a shop nicely carved and I was just looking at them from the rickshaw and my mind was like oh <laughs> a beautiful deity so beautiful look but I had an appointment so I didn't stop I was on the rickshaw and I went over there and had this meeting when I came back shop was closed the next day Giri Maharaj from Argentina he told me I saw this beautiful deities I want them for my new farm in Cordoba <coughs> I said, go, get them. Mm -hmm. So I just saw them in one second. Next moment they just came into our Janavi Kunja Kodiamat. Big Gornitai, this size, beautiful, beautiful. And he's taking them to Godrum. Godrum is the new place. It is an unbelievable, beautiful five hectare piece of land. Girimar just obtained a uh, at some distance from Cordoba in a microclimate with palms and everything uh, because Argentina is a different climate there uh, than Brazil for example. No? And uh, but it's a very very beautiful place with a little river on it and uh, many. It's, it's so picturesque that it's just a perfect setting for Godrum. Godrum. So, like this, the Sri Murti. I just saw them sightland. I said, wow. Now I'll see them again in Cordoba, in Argentina, because they already went. Huh? So, 
So like this Sri Murti is very, very powerful, very beautiful. So much that Sri Murti can actually set the scene for our life. When a, when a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deity goes somewhere, he's going to transform that place. Many things are going to happen there. Of course, if you have a deity, you also have to pay attention. You don't keep a deity in a cupboard, locked away. Deities are there to make temples for them. And if you have a deity in Ishtadev, especially if that Ishtadev was given to you by your spiritual master, then you have something very special. Very special. Like I'm, I'm going every year to, to Colombia to Jan Master me. Also, I'm going now on Nishinga Chatur the sea. I'm going to the birthday of uh, Goranga Radha Brajaswara. And then I'm going again for Janmashtami. Why? Why? And it's so far away to go to Colombia, but, but this is my Ishta. My Lord and Master is there. He owns me. I'm just sent out on a leech. Okay, go to do, do some job in, in India and come back. Uh, go to Germany, come back. You don't feel like that, but I do. I do. I know my Lord is there, and for Him I have to do. As a matter of fact, right now we are trying to make an incredible, specially stone carved sanctuary. I never thought in my life I'd get involved in a stone carving, you know. It wasn't on my mind. But for some reason it just happened to be there because in that region where we are there's many, many rocks and the people are quite expert in carving the rocks and now the devotees became more expert in carving them as well and they're making something special. Already we have the first one built and then it so happened, just for your information, that the natives of South America, actually our place is a Muisca place. The natives who used to live in that area, they are the Muiscas, very sattvic people. And right the farm next to us, which later I purchased, was very obvious a Muisca sanctuary. It was a, like a, a place of worship. For the natives in South America, this means a place of pagamentos. And this most amazing configuration of rocks which we have there, as in this Argentine farm, which is another, uh, there the natives are called different comichones. It escaped my mind what these natives in Argentina are called. But uh, so, so when I saw this, can you imagine? I bought this piece of land, but every time I went there, I went to the other one next, which wasn't ours. I was drawn to it like a, like a magnet. Every time, every time I go there, I had to go there. Then, Fortunately, on Radastami one day, we were able to obtain this piece of land where this was, where this shrine was. And there was another place which we also drawn to because there was the water. It's called the Radha Kunda, the Radha Kunda of Varshana. The most amazing place. I'm just telling you what sanctuaries are, what energy a sanctuary has. So there's the Radha Kunda, this is like a third property we purchased. So in the Radha Kunda is very cold water, only the real tough guys they go and take a bath in that lake. So one day it was a real drought, there was a real drought and there was a little river which was coming from up the, the mountain and was filling the Radha Kunda. 
So that time I walked up there and the river was, co the river was completely dry. <coughs> I said, the river is completely dry, and then I went back to the Radha and the river was, the water was still flowing into the Radha Kunda. And I went up again, it's dry, dry, dry. Again I go back and say, Radha Kunda is filling up. So I said, what's going on here? Where is this water coming from? So we went into the bushes. It was a very thicket, very thicket, thicket. Could hardly go in there. So we went in there and we found that the river was coming out under a root of a big tree. Right under a tree. The river was shooting out from the mountain, whereas the other river was dry which was also joining in there. That's very nice. It's a Sangam, you know. Anyhow, so these sanctuaries are there. Now, what happened just recently, also very amazing. The natives of South America, the tribes, the elders, they had a meeting, a gathering, for the sake of maintaining and saving their culture and their message. And it was organized by the National University of Colombia. They were providing some funds and so on. And natives were coming from Mexico and Argentina, from different parts, all the chiefs, the, the elders. So then they said, we have to make a kiva. A kiva is a heart of the earth temple. That's what the translation of kiva. So they need to make two meters down in the earth and 13 meters wide circle and have four, five altars inside that. That's the heart of, that's all native cosmology and what they know and how they do. They have a very special way of seeing the centuries. Where is the century? Where is the special God manifested place? But this one is a specific offering place. So when they told the National University that they needed to make that hole inside of their ground, the directors of the university were some, some fanatics or something Christian or so said, no, 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 you cannot do that here. You cannot make a kiva here. So it was just like four weeks before the event that they were turned down. I was in India. So one of my friends from the natives, one of the mamus, he had the idea, maybe we can do it in the Hare Krishna farm. So they called me and said, can we make a kiva in your place? And the only place a kiva was fitting was just next to the temple of Goranga Radha Brajaswara, which we are making right now, the new temple. Just talking, five meters or six meter difference. So they said, can we do it? I said, well, that means there's many, many people going to come there. This is Lord Krishna's uh, territory. I said, you can do that if you promise that you all be vegetarians when you come to our place. So they discussed and said, okay, no problem. We will take Prashad. So, so then you can imagine this is all orchestrated by Krishna. There's not one single thought of mine. Huh? So they made this kiva, they made this temple, and practically now we are between three sanctuaries, the Muiska sanctuary, the Krishna sanctuary, and right in between is a Lakshmi sanctuary, and then there is a number four, the kiva. And all this within an area of not more than 100 meters, 100, 200 meters, all together. So then they came there and they had a very wonderful four-day celebration in the Kiva, and they were participating in the program, they were all eating prasadam, and there was so much, it was such an important gathering that the natives in there, you know, they have the <coughs> elder council, they said, we have 102, 112 tribes in, in South America, like recognized tribes. 
Now we have one more, the Krishna tribe. <laughs> so the Krishna tribe became one of the tribes of South America <laughs> by Krishna's arrangement. <laughs> Don't ask me how or why, but of course we are very, very close to them because you see there's two types of way of thinking. There is the the spiritual thinking and the materialistic thinking. The materialistic thinking, it goes like this. It's like this and there's nothing more than this. And that's what's beneficial for me and that's what I do. Regardless what. Like spirit, exploitation, and there's no, there's no space for all the things. It's only for my way. Like in America they say, my way or the highway. Huh? So, the, the spiritual way of thinking is that it can be this way and it can be that way. We don't focus, it must be only this way. There's space for me, there's space for you, there's space for your thoughts and we have to harmonize. It is the Achinta Veda Veda Tattva. This is the simultaneously one and different accommodation of reality. And in that, you are always open towards everybody. It's a very beautiful way of seeing. Now, the Vedic way of thinking is definitely the second way of thinking. And all the indigenous people in the world, they also have the spiritual approach to thinking about reality. Doesn't matter whether they're from North America, South America, they all have this approach. And in that approach, Mother Nature is the most sacred, sun and moon, most revered, regarded, the soul, everything is like in a spirit of sacredness. Like for example, there's sacredness in the earth. There's sacredness in the water, and then there is the overall situation of how we struggle for our survival here, being sustained by earth and water, and the living entities sharing the resources. It's like, I guess the word, maybe you could apply for this, is holistic thinking. That we are all belonging to a harmony, it's all working into the whole, whatever, wherever you go, you will see that something has to be connected with that, this snowflake which is flow, falling down there, it has something to do with you sitting here, uh, and it affects us, and it's all like the overall uh, orchestration, the tapestry is woven throughout the creation, and in all this tapestry, somewhere, somewhere, you are also present. Oh, my dear Lord, Goranga, Gandharvika, Govinda So, if I'm part of a tapestry, look upon it like that, like we have a big uh, carpet here. So there's a tapestry, there's all the elements in this carpet are connected to each other because they're part of the tapestry. So you may say, well, one is with color, one is without color, one may be supported from the ground, might be from the top, one may be a color, whatever. In the same way like this carpet tapestry is woven, the whole creation is a huge tapestry woven. It's just it's just so amazingly more higher, sophisticated, complex. But this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give us. An understanding of the complexity of life and, and being in the spirit of simultaneously truth and highest and simultaneously different matter to overcome the struggle of against illusion. Like sometimes uh, Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. This is one of the uh, more impersonal interpretations of the truth. Says there's only the spirit, and everything else is false. But not in the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says it is all tapestry of the divine, 
And sometimes the sun is hiding behind some material thing like a cloud and sometimes it's revealed but the sun is always there and in this way you are related to the sun I like the sun is sustaining us even if there's a big cloud every day still you are sustained in your life existence by the sun so all this came in a very special way that the eastern thinkers and their spirituality and the western mystics, the natives, came together by the arrangement of Krishna on a special thing. It already started last September when I was in Rio de Janeiro on the World, World Summit of Ecology. Already at that time many natives joined and I asked for help because the, uh, the Belomonte Dam and all this and this was like a <coughs> It was a desperate search for answers in a self-destroying mentality of the Western mentality. So everybody's like, hey, hey, stop it, wake up, wake up, my friend. We can't go on destroying what keeps us alive, which is going to be the future. We can't wake up. And then there were all the governments that were sitting there with two fingers in the ears. We are making a green economy now. After the green revolution of putting LF, uh, chemicals all over the world, now they want to make a green economy, which is like just a slogan. They use green and bio and all these words, but they have nothing to do with it. They were totally in denial. And this is one of the big problems in this world, living in denial. Just if you stick your foot in a shredder, well then you get your foot shredded. So you better don't live in denial and watch out, where's the shredder? And don't step in it. So in the same way. Uh, but there was something very more, very more intensive. That hey, this cannot be solved by violence, by revolution. This cannot be solved by aggression. This can only be solved by love. That was the conclusion of Rio 20 plus 20. There is no hope except love and individual consciousness. Forget about Greenpeace. Forget about Amnesty International. Forget about the WWF. Forget about all these organizations, even though they may go on with their work and hopefully they do some good work. We are not denying them the validity of their efforts, but we had to go the result. 2012. All the numbers going down the drain. All the so supposed work for the preservation of the planet are not effective. The media, the ignorance campaigns are so intensive, the planet is in despair. And the natives scream, stop it. There's a saying amongst the natives in South America, which says, as long as the white man does not understand who are the real guardians of nature and follow their counseling, they are just doomed to self-destruction. Another saying they, have, they, have, they say is that the coca leaf is the blessing of the indigenous people and it is the curse of the white man. Interesting, no? At the same, when the natives chew the coca leaf, as a matter of fact, the, the, the coca leaf amongst the natives is the symbol of Mother Earth and caring for her and friendship. 
So whenever two people meet each other, they put a little coca leaf into the bag of the other, and the other takes some leaves from his and put into his bag. When they chew the coca leaf, especially the men are doing it, women are not chewing coca leaves, because women have the Mother Earth energy already. Man doesn't have the Mother Earth energy. So man is chewing it so that they can get Mother Earth energy, know how to respect earth, water, women, children, and sick people. It's like a, it's like an awakening experience to them. <laughs> Taking responsibility and creating friendship. So for them the coca tree is a very sacred tree and there's no intoxication. Maybe a bit of stimulation, but that's all. Uh, so, <coughs> anyway, I got a little side, <coughs> side track here. But, uh, okay, so it started in Rio de Janeiro and simultaneously it started. So then I was just going to New York and sent to Dominican Republic when I got a special invitation. The invitation was from the Sierra Nevada from the four, four indigenous groups, the Arhuacos, Huivas, Carquamos, and Kogis, four, four type of groups. They're living all together in this most beautiful setting of Sierra Nevada. Something like a dream. Can hardly believe that such a thing on this planet exists. And just a short time before that, like two years ago, I was gifted for Krishna a piece of land in the Arwaku territory, which is the Prema Sayuna, or the, the, the place of the, it's the farm of the seed of love. It's one of our seed banks for sharing organic s s uh, seeds. All kinds of things, no? Amazing situation. So, so that was there. I had this relationship with these families there. Even at that time I visited there. But when this invitation came, I was invited to represent India and the caring of India for Mother Earth by the natives of South America. And they, were, they invited like a group of uh, 30 people. And there were meetings. So when I got this invitation, I said, my goodness this invitation you don't get every day. So I canceled all my other trips. I said, I'm going there to Sierra Nevada. So when I went there, it was a very beautiful encounter because the natives had come up to the same conclusion as we in, 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 in Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro, we need the solution of love. And we have to protect the ancient wisdom and, I mean, so many things happened at the same time. At the same time, there was one devotee group, they just donated a piece of land to make a university of ancient wisdom, also in the Sierra Nevada, but on the other side, on the Santa Marta side. And they all came with me to meet the natives. And this, this meeting together, it was for two and a half days, it was so significant because it was an alliance for the awakening of humanity, of course, to Lord Chaitanya. But how to wake to Lord Chaitanya, to the spirit of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the love, the care, the respect, everything which comes from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu are like the sun and the moon who have ari arisen simultaneously on the orison of Goda to dissipate all the darkness of this world. So here I am in South America, the, the, the land of the sun worship. Of course we also visited the sun worshippers of Bulgaria. My goodness, when we visited the Sun Temple of Bulgaria, blows your mind completely. Most amazing place. Who was, Shanket, are you here? No. <coughs> what was that called, Gopal? Perpericon. 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 
What? It's on top of a mountain, a huge temple of the sun. Then we went to Terni in Italy, and again we went to the Surya Narayan Mandir, which is actually recognized by historians as a Surya Narayan Mandir, pre Etruscan. And then, so it's like, hmm. Then we went to Konark. You saw the picture yesterday when we, when we invited the people from Konark to this world conscious awareness, and that's the world conscious pact, or Ikshvarinduna in the Indian language. So, so this awakening to the temple of the heart, this is so historical. It's something never ever happened before. And only in great humility and great respect can you understand what's going on. Because don't forget one thing. I belong to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I'm his property. He can do with me whatever he wants. And of course, Vaya Srila Prabhupada. So if he sent me in all these kind of strange ways. Okay, then that night we had these meetings. We went to the, to the temple of the offerings. The temples of the offerings was a slot, was a stone which was sticking out from the ground like this. Huge! And under there was a natural cave. And that's where the, the meetings of the natives was. And then finally we went on top of the temple to make, to sign the agreement, the alignment. That was amazing. But it was a, like we were also just getting to know each other. And of course, they all speak other languages, so... Anyhow... Hare Krishna Manuari. Then, six o'clock at night, it's getting dark, there's no electricity, no plastic, no weapons, nothing up there, it's only life, pure life. So it is getting down, and I asked the native chief, the Mamu, so what are we going to do now? I didn't really have an answer. I asked him, would you like me to sing? And he said, sing! Sing, yes! Singing, that's good! So I said, well, that's our process. So I, I started singing. And I had already investigated a little bit about their language so I could sing some of the holy names in their, in their tongue. Uh, Serangwa, uh, Senekung. Senekung is like the female divine energy. Serangwa is the male, uh, male divine energy. So I started chanting, Oh my Lord, please let me be an instrument of your love in different languages. And I just sang, I mean, I didn't have any plan and somebody had a pair of cartels doing a little bit symbol on it. And before I know it, this whole place transformed into something most amazing you've never seen in your life. This whole place turned into like a big dancing area, like a wild disco. Huh? But the disco where there were some sagas, 60, 70 year old ladies, uh, from the natives, from the meeting, and everybody was dancing and dancing and dancing. And then after I sang a few songs and they were really into it, then there, there was Jagannath Salsa people were with me from the University of Ancient Wisdom. And they started playing their music and it got really. We ended up chanting and dancing for four hours, each way changing, and they chanted. They, we made circular dances, but there was no light. There was just a few camera lights, like things like that. So you could hardly only imagine what was going on, because you heard the sound. And it was just, wasn't, um, how you call that? Uh, no protocol festival. <laughs> Because nobody had any idea what we were going to do and who's going to sing and what's next. No, there was a no protocol spiritual union festival. <coughs> so that went on for four hours. 
until we all got tired. Then some other things happened, but it's a separate, uh, separate story. I'm just trying to tell you that this mystical openness towards what we need in this planet right now is people are ready to stand out for the truth with love. At any place, at every, any moment, with any instruments necessary. For chanting, dancing, feasting, sharing, and taking steps to defend the oppressed, the abused, whatever that means. And that's what we did in Kumamela also. That was, a, that was an extension. I went actually assignment. My assignment was to go to India and awaken the people to our world friendship. So I went there. Of course, I already had the connection with Vandana Shiva. She's always in South America. She's completely connected. But then the yogis. And I went to the Chidananda Muniji and I told them, I'm coming here to awaken a spiritual connection between South America and the spiritual India. And he looked at me. Yeah, that's a really wonderful idea. So it was like all the, you could see the open, the, all the do doors were opening by the Vaishnavas, by the yogis, by the nature lovers, the environmentalists, the animal <coughs> defenders. Well, whoever they are, all of us, we are one big family and we, are, we have one big concern, my friends. We have one big concern. Stop the madness. And what is the madness? Well, you all know it. I don't have to explain to you what is the madness. Stop the madness. That's all we have to say. That's all we have to do. And of the madness by chanting. Lots of chanting, lots of opening, lots of discussion, lots of spreading of vegetarianism. For example, oh yeah, that night was very interesting. After finally we got tired at 12 o'clock or so, everybody searched out the place to hang out. Most of us had a hammock, sleeping in hammocks. It was like out there in, in a sacred mountain. Of, if you see those mountains, my goodness, so beautiful. Just under the mountain of justice. They have one mountain under which they discuss any conflicts. So this whole thing had taken place under the mountain of justice. So, so then I was lying in my hammock and all the natives, they went into their eternal fire temple. I mean, you have done sense. Now we are one o'clock at night. No? And I was lying in my hammock and I couldn't sleep. And then Nelson came to me. Nelson was the, in, the convener. He had organized, he had invited us and all that. And he came to me and says, this singing was the best thing I've had seen in my life. I'm so thankful. This whole thing has been like orchestrated by some divine background we don't know about. Anyhow, so we were there. And I asked him, but what the elders are doing now? Oh, he said, they're listening to lectures. I said, what? They're listening to lectures at one o'clock in the morning. So I became curious. After I stopped talking with Nelson and he went to sleep, then I got up from my hammock and I just went into the, na into the native's temple. And factually, that was very amazing. I had a fire burning there. And there were all the elders were sitting around. One was 110 years old. He was, he was, uh, and one was giving a lecture, and all of them were sitting and they were uh, listening. So when I went in there, I just sat down. And after maybe half an hour of listening, there was one uh, cabildo who who had been the representative of that community before the government. So he knew a little Spanish, so he sat next to me. And he was telling me a little bit what the speaker was talking about. And so as I was sitting there, all of a sudden the speaker said, well, now we want to hear what you have to say. 
Can you imagine how I was feeling now? Why? Wow, wow. Here I am in the dark night with these natives sitting in their, in their holy fire temple and they ask me to speak. So I spoke in Spanish and sometimes the Cabildo was translating a few things into Arwaco. And it was so, so wonderful because I constantly got the feedback. As I was saying these things, they were making signs of approval. And I talked about the no violence to animals and, and that we cannot spoil the Mother Earth with these chemicals which now slowly were already invading the lower areas of Sierra Nevada which is like all their holy sacred territories, you know. And yeah, and I got the signals. They gave me all the signals. Yes, we have to work together. This is, this is, this is a unique meeting here. We should never forget it and we should work on it for the benefit of Mother Earth, for the benefit of all the children of Mother Earth. So, I mean, I've, I've gone to Sierra Nevada for the last 25 years. It's not that I don't know this place. And it's not that I don't know native people, but never ever had, did I have an encounter of that quality. Because you don't speak another person's language, he thinks one thing, you think another, and that's it. <clears throat> you can just walk by each other, never ever recognize that there was something to be learned or shared or helped or anything. But this was totally, it was drawn into the center and it was like, we want this flower to blossom of universal consciousness and love. And of course, I chanted the name of Lord Chaitanya also. And I spoke to them about this great personality in India who had come to give us so much relief. But it was a little removed from what we were thinking right now. So it was a, a gradual, net, gradual and natural introduction of Lord Chaitanya to the world, which if you ask me, it was the beginning of a new uh, paradigm of understanding the necessities of life. A totally new paradigm which was or is being searched after all around the world because you, you may call that the zeitgeist which is like many people are in the, in the main type of feeling, you know. <laughs> doesn't matter whether it's Shama Mohini with her patience there in, in Mevegan or it is uh, Prishni cleaning the, the Ganga bank in Mayapur or it is Radha Dasyam translating some books from the Nectar uh, into German or, or it's Govinda Vilas thinking how to make the solution for our, our Berlin Yatra. Uh, like, it is all in the same zeitgeist, trying to unite the energies, the forces for the welfare of the planet. Because if we are not into that spirit, if we are not invoking this, if we are not participating in this in one way or another, we are a bit out of it. If we just going to think how to make money by poisoning the land and the people and killing the animals. I saw this movie Nie Wieder Fleisch yesterday. Actually, I didn't want to see it because it's a terrible movie. It has slaughterhouse scenes and all that. Movies which I don't really like to see, but it was a new thing and I thought I should be informed. And it was very interesting how it was made, how it was confronting the the modern lifestyle and the ignorance of our modern man in this and and then uh, uh, the absolute denial of our western society you know actually you must understand one thing whether you like it or not Europe and America are extremely sick nations 
man who does not protect himself against this extreme sickness, he is becoming extremely sick as well. We are living in extremely sick environments. We are killing and poisoning. You should have seen the end of the movie. That's a good one for Germany. Holland, <coughs> the Netherlands, realized that their animal stool is spoiling their agriculture and their land. So what is Holland doing? It is paying Germany to put all their animal mass factory stools on German fields. And even springs in Germany have already nitrate levels which are five times more than acceptable for healthy uh, taking intake. So practically, in order to make some money, you know this is this bankers and all these things, how it works, somebody makes money putting the misery on all the others. And you may know or you may not know. Most of the time you don't know. That's why we're living in this ignorance. You don't know what's the water situation. Because <coughs> you don't have a laboratory to test it yourself. Nor do you know what are the safe levels and the non-safe levels of this and that. You don't know. You don't know what air you're breathing. You don't know what products you're eating. <coughs> And you don't know what it does to you. You have some idea. You know when you watch TV that you become every time more dumb. But still, do you know what salt does to you? Do you know what sugar does to you? Do you know what uh, talking nonsense does to you? There's so many different things which just have us captured, locked in. And of course we are concerned because we have children. And we better be concerned, don't you think so? I am responsible for what happened to my children if I know that this is wrong, it's going to harm my children. I have to do something about this. So in the middle of all these circumstances, very surprisingly, now we are making this temple for Goranga Radha Brajaswar, carved in rocks, very simple, cave stylish. We are doing things natural way, cave stylish, very happy. Of course it rains a lot, so we have to worry about the roof. And roofs means always some headaches. <laughs> but we need them anyway. So, just like we need to finish many things in Vindakunja now to make this place a celebration place for our Lordship. Our Lordships. But our Lordships, they provided Vindakunja with the permission to construct a temple there. So if we don't do it now, well, what can be done? Actually, I was in a doubt about it before because I wanted to keep their lordship in Mitte. I thought they belonged into Mitte because Mitte is the middle of town, most important, but you know, they don't care. Mitte or, or another place, what they care about is the love of the devotees. And where the love of the devotees is, they will be very happy. So, but this is something, you know, it's so amazing. Anybody who was there, he knows that their lordship, Gandharvika Govinda Sundaram, got this Vindakunja house. We, we, nobody can take any credit. A few people were a little instrumental here and there, but nobody can take the credit. It was their lordship who got this temple for the devotees. 
And therefore, we are committed to make this a very beautiful, incredible, extraordinary sanctuary. To make everybody happy inside the temple and around inside the temple also. So we have to harmonize with our environment. And so we do everywhere where we go. We have to make friendships and show the people our concern for their well-being. And our concern for the well-being of the others, that includes protecting the waters, providing healthy food, informing people about what's good for them, what's not good for them. And if you do that from the heart, then you will see how appreciative people are. How appreciative. So we forgot the Prima Dama de Vashtottam with the English translation in Berlin. I believe, yes. Huh? <laughs> da, da, da. <coughs> well, we can translate it from German. Anyhow, all these things uh, have been on my heart, on my mind. <coughs> Lately I've been really pulled here and there and there. But I tell you one thing. All this is meant to open the doors to Krishna's heart for many, many people who, other <coughs> who otherwise would have no access to his heart. So bear with me. I'm also bearing with Krishna. <laughs> I don't know what plan he has, what's next, how it's going to go on. Maybe these things will fructify in 100 years. Of course, to some degree they have fructified already, but how do I know when people become more willing? In that documentary, Ni Vida Fleisch, they were reporting about France, and that in France nobody hardly speaks about not eating meat. That even those who are against meat they're just speaking about health and things like that, but not the part of how sinful we are of creating so much misery for the living entities. In France, our friends, our, our brothers and sisters from France, all these sensitive, beautiful human beings, but when it comes to meat, there's no discussion. In Germany, they're much more free to receive, oh, 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 we are doing something wrong with the animals. They don't discuss it. They just say, it's necessary. We have to kill them. And they don't realize that by killing the animals, we're killing our health, we're killing our water, we're killing South America, we're killing Africa. Can you imagine that Germany, Europe, is the biggest meat exporter to Africa? <laughs> Africa, this wonderful tropical country in the south. German slaughterhouses export tons and tons of meat there, destroying their economies. Because it's dumping meat. They're dumping the meat there at prices which can only be sustained by all the exploitation everywhere. And because the European market only wants to eat the breast of the chicken, the rest of the chicken goes to Africa. <laughs> Germans only eat breasts. <laughs> and then in order to get that breast business going on, they're dumping on Africa the rest of the chicken. And they're smuggling them everywhere. No, no, it's such a dirty business. It's just as bad as the slavery time. What they're doing to Africa, maybe we should see this movie here, maybe some, it's, it's unbelievable. <coughs> How they're destroying a continent in order to have... And then the guy who was interviewed from the, I guess from the Strasbourg uh, Council of Economics, 
He said, we have to keep our machinery running. We have to make sure that we can keep producing and increasing our production. There was one Danish slaughterhouse, a Danish slaughterhouse, exporting to 120 countries in the world meat. God save me from all this madness, from all this madness, careless madness, which all the karma comes back on Europe, my dear. Just wait what misery will be inflicted here in due course of time for doing such nasty, sinful things to the planet and living in luxury. <coughs> no, 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 no and no. We have to change. We have to bring consciousness to our friends. And one of the ways we do that, at least some people do, we distribute millions of okis, conscious awareness things, and come together and let's think about it. I can show you two documentaries, each one five minutes long. When you see them, either you want to vomit or you want to change. And you want to be part of the action of conscious rising of a new paradigm. Or you just want to say, ah, nothing to bother me. Let the world go to hell. It's anyway. It's whoever gets the overhand, let him enjoy. And whoever gets the underhand, let him suffer. Who cares? If you subscribe to that philosophy, you perfectly fit into Europe. Thank you very much, Lord Chaitanya, for showing me another way of being.